Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So what we have been talking about with dealerships is starting to play out. They're going out of business because of the shift to EVs and the first small steps towards that we can see right now in some new data. And I think we can also say the dealership model is hurting someone like Ford much more than people realize. Remember, Ford has been ramping up the mark -E for a year, but it was down 21% in Q2 year over year. So dealership seems to be hurting the legacy automakers much more than people think. And one of the reasons that the dealerships can't just shift to the EV model is because of something called service absorption. And is one of the reasons why Ford will adopt Tesla's model at the beginning of next year with online and in-store shopping with non-negotiated pricing. Yes, everyone wants to go the Tesla way. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. Once upon a time, car dealers were a servant to the manufacturers in every single way. And during the Great Depression, Henry Ford forced all the dealerships to continue to buy his cars to keep his production line going and his company safe while the economy plummeted. The dealers knew if they didn't buy the cars, they should never get another car from Ford and their business would die. This abuse of the dealerships led to the dealerships creating associations to protect themselves from manufacturers to abuse their power over the dealerships. And that is why in the US the dealership is protected by law and why Tesla in some states are still not allowed to sell directly to customers <laughs> in the land of the free. Sure, if you say so. But the problem is that dealerships hardly earn money on selling cars, and neither do the old automakers. What they earn money on is maintenance, service checks, spare parts, loans, and insurance. There is something called service absorption, and that is how much money the dealership earn on service. This is normally about 70% of their earnings and only 30% comes from sales. And dealerships that have been around for a very long time and have many many cars on the roads that all need service can have 90% or more service absorption. So they don't really care if they sell a car at a loss as long as it comes into the everlasting loop of service and repairs. So the problem with EVs is they don't need much service, which is the dealership's main business. So some dealerships are looking at maybe something like 70% drop in earnings with the shift to EVs. No company on earth is willing to shrink their business by 70% without a fight. So of course they will fight against this. And Ford has been in many talks with their dealerships as they have been marking up their EVs with unreal adjustment fees as high as $30,000. But now it seems like all the millions of EVs currently on the roads are starting to have some impact on the service business for dealerships. In July, the repair order volume index dropped to 83.7, down 7.8% compared to June's figures and is down 3% compared to July of last year, reflecting the lowest service volume for July in the past 5 years according to X-Time Matrix. But we know that the average cost of a new car is at its all-time high and the average monthly payment is at its all-time high and the average age of a vehicle on the roads is also at its all-time high. So if people are holding on to the cars longer than ever before, why are repair order volumes down? 
Well, the only real explanation is that there are also a record high amount of electric vehicles on the street, which all have taken a place from a nice car that needs a lot of service. So what we have been talking about for years now seems to start showing up in the numbers. And for the well-established dealership with more than 90% service absorption, this could spell trouble in the not-so-distant future, as we will put about 14 million more EVs on the road here in 2020. And probably more like 20 million more next year. So Tesla is pumping out ever more electric cars into the US market and other places, of course, and making the fleet of cars that need real old school service smaller and smaller. But as always, we of course have to consider the double trouble there is for the dealerships and car industry in general when and in my opinion, not if, but when we get to robo-taxis, whenever that might be, that will make this trend accelerate even faster. If Tony Seba is going to be right, which he usually is, when the robo-taxis are here, it will become cheaper to have transport as a service, so a vehicle on demand, than just keeping your old ice cars running that you already own. So just the gas and maintenance will be more costly than having a car on demand whenever you need it. So why would anyone want to own their own car? There will of course be a few that are going to want to do it because they have some special need, like special tools they have to have in their car or something like that. But most people will not pay more to just keep their old outdated ice car alive than having a Tesla robo taxi come pick you up and drive you everywhere you want whenever you need it. So as always, full self-driving cars will change everything. But before we get to that, dealerships are already hurting the old legacy automakers today as they do not fit into this new business model of EVs. So it is not really hard to understand why the Model Y is selling so much better than the Mark E. The Mark E is actually down in sales. After all the talk about the Mark E is eating into Tesla sales and how Ford would just ramp up production, well, the Mark E sales are down 21% in Q2 compared to same period last year. So after a whole year of ramping up production, they are down 21%. But it's not hard to understand why, when we take the dealership into calculation, and of course that Tesla has cut the prices, because if you're trying to decide between a Tesla Model Y or a Mark E, and just forget that the Tesla has longer range or faster and can charge faster and are more safe and better software and all of that, just forget that. But just look at how you get the two cars. Well, with a Tesla, you just jump on your phone and order it in less time than it takes you to spell electrocution. But with Ford, you have to take time off work to go to the dealership, bargain for a price and try not to get screwed over and pay ten or $20,000 more than the sticker price after hours at the dealership. Yeah, I know which car I would choose on this simple fact alone, because I'm not even getting more range or a faster car or faster charging or a better charging network or more cargo space. I will get nothing extra for all my hassle and extra time spent at the Ford dealership. Nothing, nada, sip. This is a big problem. And on top of that, the Mark E GT is also about $5,000 more expensive than the Tesla Model Y performance. But you will get about 30 miles less range and a slower 0 to 60 and about 40% less cargo space and a less safe car as well. This is big problems for Ford. And that is also why Ford is now taking some drastic steps away from this old dealership model in 2024. Starting in January next year, Model E customers will have a new retail experience with online and in-store shopping, non-negotiated pricing and remote vehicle deliveries. So taking the Tesla way. But at the end of the day, when all cars are EVs, the dealership will be turned into showrooms and of course do the small maintenance and fixes that of course need to be done on EVs as well. But they will become a shadow of the former self. And the beginning of that we are already seeing happening right now. And thank you for watching. 
And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>